Welcome back. Today we're going to jump into the jig world. Uh, these things have just taken over, man. It's we, we the the Pertagon style and the bullets and the, the really tight bodied flies have kind of taken over uh, in the nymph world, mostly because they catch fish like crazy, but and they're super simple. But the thing about them is they offend everything in my fly tying psyche. They're just so simple and they shouldn't work as well as they do. So, uh, and, and you can do this with virtually any fly. And it's, and it's so much about where that fly is and not that it's just a shiny little nothing fly, right? It's, it's about the way you weigh them, the way you get them down there. And so, and I fish all of them and I fish a lot of them, but uh, I, I like to see a little bit of soul into the fly. And I'm gonna show you how to tie these and how you can do it without really slowing it down because the key to these things isn't that they're, that they, it's the shine that's all they're looking at, it's the fact that they're in the right spot. And so the right size bead and the right type of hook gets the fly down deep. But I like to see a little bit of sole into them. So we're gonna just do a hair's hair jig. It's one I, you know, MFC does this fly, was doing it this year for us. And, and it's just a little bit, it's fun. It's a super simple, super fast little fly. And I'm going to show you how to keep it lean. And so it'll drop virtually as fast, not much drops as fast as the, the coated bullets or pertagons and stuff like that, but it's really close. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start out with the hooks. And, you know, I use two different styles, and, and I think most people do. Uh, I've got the 5045 fully mill. That's a 50 degree. This is, you know, this is a great little hook. I, I've been, this is one that, We've actually been in this in this world. We've had the flies for about five years here. They didn't really catch on so much until last year. And the hooks, uh, same thing. People just weren't tying on them. In the last 18 months, two years, it's just gone crazy. And the other hook is, and this one's becoming really, really, uh, and by the way, this is a 2X long. This is a 1X, this is a 1X long hook. This is a 36 degree hook. It's just... It's a little bit of how you want the ride to fly, how you want the fly to ride, and it's a little bit about the length of the hook. The shorter the shank, you know, if not doing a real complicated fly, you might want to shorten the shank. And this one is a, a 36 degree, a little less bend, and you know, just a little shorter. And that's the fire hole stick. That's a that's a really popular hook right now. And so the bead on it, I'm using a Hannock. Uh, I'm going to use a 3.5. And this is kind of, this is, this is a little bit, that's a 3-0. You know, until the, until the European influence showed up, everything was in eights. It was all American, right? And so now we're going to 3.5s and weights. And so you're going to have to get used to that. It's about a one eighth is on this 3.5. But you just have to get used to what you like. The one thing you will see with all of these Euro nymphs is that, that there does not seem to be too big of a head for a fly. You will see flies that look so grotesquely over the, the ball and the head looks like it should be on a streamer. doesn't matter. It hunts. It gets down where it belongs. And so, and that's a little, little bit personal. When you figure out how you're going to fish your flies, you know, rather you're, you're, you're euro nymphing, whether you're going to just, you're not going to drop shot, you're not going to use lead at all, no indicator, you're just going to tight line it. You're going to have to have different weights to your beads. It's, it's, it's not that complicated. It's just one sinks faster. It's a different size split shot. Nothing more to it. And so the body on this, I'm going to use, and generally speaking, you'll see me, I, I like, I didn't grab one. Uh, I like to pick my own hairs there. Uh, and this particular fly, because there's so little body to it, these are great. And you can, these boxes are 14, 15 bucks. And you get all those dubbings. You can do a bunch of colors. You're going to use this much dubbing, right? And so I'm going to use it. And I've been using it on my production ones that are going out because it's just fast. It's just a lot easier than picking it out. Let's do a traditional hair here. I still like to do that, but on this one, the body's so short. And then I'm going to rib it, and you're going to see I'm going to have a little under flash, and I'm going to have under flash, and I'm going to have the rib, and then you can see there's two little legs I'm going to use with this. And, and I did that on the on uh, Nick Nicholas's uh, uh, three dip, and I put these antennas on his fly and started, and I thought it, I thought it looked better. Just I don't know why. I just wanted it, and that was this. That was one of the. It is our number one fly in the shop for sure. And I just put them on it, and I started doing this with my hair's ears, especially on the jigs, because the fish is looking from the bottom up, and it was a little bit of reflection. You'll see when I tie it in. 
it's sitting on there. It's not a lot. It's just a little bit. And so we're going to do that style with that. And then we're going to, that's going to be our rib. Uh, the tail and the, the tail and the legs are going to be hare's ear, I mean, uh, Hungarian partridge. And then the body, uh, we could do it with hare's ear. And then we're going to have a little bit of collar, just so we get a little bit of sole of this thing. Just to, you know, on, on, on a lot of these nymphs, they're just, they're different colors of flashaboo. And, and then they put a little, they put a little accent in them. I'm doing that the old fashioned way. And you'll see, and these things, and they're super simple and they're really durable. And this is just peacock eye. The thing that Jeremy and I were talking about earlier is that the peacock eyes, uh, I don't know what I did with that. I had some peacock curls sitting out here. And the peacock curl, when you buy it strung, just seems, you seem to get a little bit more fullness out of these. And so I'm kind of going over to the eyes, the, the swords, which I knocked off and put on the floor. I'll grab that. And so, and what I meant by that was I grabbed one of these ones that was already strung. And I, I'm just going to show you this because I was telling Jeremy when we were setting up that the flies, the hackle, and I don't know, not the hackle, the hurl, I don't know what happened. But I'm telling you, when I, when I was young, it seemed like we had to trim this stuff. It was so thick. And it's just a matter of how much hurl is on the edge of these things and, you know, trying to build it up. And on the strung ones, it tends to be a little thinner. I'm going to take this off this, this eye, and it's just a little thicker. And you'll be able to see when I, when I do it. But, and, and I don't know if it's all of them, but it just seems as of late that we get a little bit better you probably get less of this, but you get a little bit better hurl quality. And so, put that over there, I'll keep that one. So, onward and upward, the last thing, um, I'm going to use orange 12 watt and uh, the Semperfly. A lot of these things have hot spots. It was kind of fun, you know, you get a little hot spot on it, you'll see how I do it. And so, and that just, it's just, it's kind of an accent strike, right? Nothing more. And so, on these, when you, this is a, uh, slotted bead so when you put it on it's a little easier to get on the hook and there's going to be two two ways you can do that you can have it with the slot down or the slot up i particularly i i like it down because i don't like to see that big gap when i'm finishing my fly i don't think it would make any difference whatsoever but when i do it i just i you'll see there's a little less gap when you when you're tying it you'll, it's just a, it means nothing <laughs> it's just how i like to see my own and, and on the other ones, on the countersunks, they don't have a slot. And so you don't really deal with that at all. Uh, I had one sitting here that I just did that is on one of the countersunks. And if, on the hook, if the hook's not too small uh, and the bead's big enough, you can get them around. If, it's, if not, you go to the, the slotted ones. And when you're putting it on, it'll just, it allows you to go around the radius of the hook. So, and you can see right there, <clears throat> when I stand it up, you're going to see there's a pretty big gap right there. And so I'll turn it around. I don't know if you can, can you see that, Jeremy? Nope. Okay. Well, when I turn it around, you can see it's, it's just one way there's a little less gap than the other. It's still going to show, but we're going to fill it up a little bit. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this thing a little bit of a uh, dam right here to kind of keep that bead forward where I want it. And when you do that, on the 12 watts, a little bit more. And the, but if you build this up a little bit, when we get up here, what's going to happen when you finish, when you, when you tie your flies and you get up here, especially on these slotted beads, if you don't build a dam, you'll get up there and you'll, your last stuff will want to tend to fall into this gap, right? And so just take a second. And I like to build because that's going to be where my accent is. I start a taper right here and I'm just simply starting this thing to taper with my thread, 12 uh takes a little, if you're running six, uh, you would build quicker. But I, I like to see that thing, it's almost tight. You can see it's not wobbling around on me. And so now when I get up here and I finish it, it's going to be closer to the thickness that we're going to finish with our materials. And I just don't fall off into that when I put the last thing on. it. So moving backwards here, uh, the crystal, the accent, this is going to be the crystal flash. It's going to be one strand, I'm just going to double it over is all I'm going to do. And that's going to be, it's going to twist it up. This is going to be the rib and it's going to be the legs. And they're not really legs. I don't know what the hell they are. They're underneath there, but they're not. 
they're just kind of there. And so I'm going, to tie, I'm going to just loop this right here. I'm going to pull it tight just so I can use it for a little bit of body. Just build that up, bring it back here to the side. Now we're going to take a partridge. I, I showed a bag of partridge. I'm just going to use the skin. You can see this thing's pretty well. There's not much left of it. I like being able to look, in, I, and this is one thing I'm, I'm always talking about consistency. I'll just get in the mood that I, I want to see brown legs in it or whatever. I like that with these partridge skins because I can dig around and find a shade that I'm looking for or I want longer legs or whatever. And it's it just, just something I like. I'm going to go for, to get a little of that brown tip because I like to see it on the legs. And then I'm going to strip this off. See how that's this is kind of a greasy neck. So I'm going to get all that stuff gone. And you can see, I'm going to take, I like to see this little, I don't know if you can see that. I like to see these little brown tips in there when I tie it into my legs. On the, on the tails, and that's one thing you'll see on a lot of the European nymphs right now, they have virtually no tail, right? It's, it's all about the shine. It's about that flash being down there and the fish sees it. But again, it kind of offends me that I don't, you spend your whole life learning to tie flies and then you take all the parts off of it. <laughs> it just kind of bugs me. So I'm going to put this really, it's not going to be a thick tail, but I mean, if it was, your natural does not have a thick tail either. So we're mimicking it, but I'm going to have it, it's just about the length of the body, not, not the overall hook, just about the length of the body. So there's my, there's where my thread tie off is. I'm going to go right behind it. I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to do a trap where I'm just going to, a loose wrap, get it around. And then I'm going to look at it and just take a look. It's a little longer than I want. I'm going to move it forward. On and off, right? So there, I just got four or five turns of that. Third turn right there. <clears throat> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that as part of my buildup of the taper. So it's very thin. You could have left that if you wanted to and done it right over with your loop. But just, I like smoothing that stuff up. So where'd you go to? All my dubbings down in here. So now I'm going to do a dubbing, and this is where this is where like if you want to tighten these up because that the fuzziness of your fly is what slows your descent down through the water, right? And so you take a a, a pertagon and it's got that super shiny. It's been coated with you know with lacquer or with a UV resin. It just phew, it's like shooting through the water. So the more you build this body up, the slower you're gonna that's going to happen. So I'm going to keep it really thin. So if you want to finger dub this with it, you know, like that would be fine. I'm going to do it with a dubbing loop because I really like to see just a little bit of pickiness. We're back. Had a short game break there. Had somebody come in and have a dog stampede. So I was saying that I'm going to put this loop in and I'm, I'm going to make a really small loop, right? It's going to be, we're going to have so little material in this thing. So I'm going to come up here to where... I'm going to put in a collar after this, but I want to, I want to have the body really tight, right? It, it's, and that's the whole deal, deal of these things is they are trying to get to the bottom quickly. And so just like always, when you take this, when you take this hairs there, you don't, you're going to form this in your hand. It's almost non-existent taper. So you're not going to have much in here and you're going to use virtually no hair. And so, as you can see, which I don't know if you can see that or not, but I, put, I think you can see it with that back there. You can see I've got about an inch worth of this. Can you see that, Jeremy? Yep. And it's, I mean, virtually nothing. And so, we're putting it in the loop. And, I, and again, I, I, I just like loops. I mean, it, it, it gives the fly a little bit of character, a little bit of style. It's not just tight dub. And it just gives a little pickiness you can... You can see I've got about an inch in this loop, and I really like this orange um, thread underbody with it because it's so it kind of gives it a little translucency, and it's just a cool look underneath it. But you can see how tight this body is, right? It's and so I'm going to be right close, first one, just take a good look. We're just going to go forward, just a tiny little bit of taper to that body, hardly anything. But you can see it's still a little picky. Just to, I just if you wanted to dub that with your fingers, it's such a small body, it really isn't going to matter. And then I'm going to take this 
I'm going to take the, uh, and you can see how I built, I'm get that dam, see how I've got about the same width here, and that's what I was talking about. When you start doing this, if I didn't have that, when I put the last, when I put the legs on, it would fall over. It would just fall into it. So now we're going to take, and remember this fly is a jig, and so this fly is going to ride how it's sitting in the vise right now. It's going to ride head down, or it's, it's the top of the fly is going to ride down at it. So I'm going to take this uh, crystal flash and I'm going to just spin it nice and tight and see how it looks like little beads and just go forward, give it, you know, four or five turns that, and right here. And then we're going to get back to the top so the flies kind of in a traditional, and you see I came forward two or three wraps here. That's just so when I tie it in right here, if I, if I leave it real close to the body, has the tendency to want to roll a little bit when I tie it in. And so I'm going to give it a turn here and I'm just going to come right back over top, right, right there. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to cut these off. Just, they're just little tiny accents. All right. And I'm going to take two, you could use one if it's not real thick. I like to use two anyway, simply because even if they're nice and thick, if one breaks, I'm just hoping that one will still hold, because it's not really that, it's not a really strong material. So I'm going to tie this in, and this is what I was getting at, is when I built this, when I built that dam, I want this thicker so that it, when I tie off, it, it doesn't fall into the gap right there. So now I'm going to take these, just spin them around a little bit. Get a little, doesn't take much, you really don't, just a little bit. And I'm going to come forward, and I'm just going to give it a nice little collar. And we're going to, and this is where I, I'm going to build right over this with the, uh, with the thread to give it the accent. But just take it right to the eye, break those off. And now I'm going to, and if you want to use, you know, hot pink, whatever, if you, whatever you want to use for that accent, that's fine. And so now I'm going to take, I want this, I like the fly to have its legs where they belong on top. So if this fly was in the water for real, it would not be riding with its belly up in the air, right? It's going to be riding like here, so it's down. I want the legs on top, and I'm going to take this, and if you didn't put these legs in, I'm sure it wouldn't really affect it much. It just would have zero sole. And so we're going to give it, I took the, we're going to give it a pair of, uh, there's some legs. And I took the same tail, this is the tail, and I could just take a gob of these and put them on there. I'm going to do it just so it has a little bit of, I'm going to, a little bit of leggish. And I'm going to take those. And when I did that, this is a kind of a, this is kind of a gross feather. It's got a lot of grease on it. So they're kind of sticking together. But what you can see, they just, these, these skins get greasy. And this is a, it's not a very old skin, but I've, it's, I use it a lot, and so it just kind of pushes it into it. So I'm going to set this as a V, and I cut the tip of that feather out, and I'm going to tie it in so it's like this, and I'm going to tie it in so the pretty side is looking at me only because I want to see these brown legs. And I'm going to put them right on top, soft wrap right here, and I'm just going to look at my legs. You can see them sitting there right now, right? And I'm just going to give them a little bit of a pull, Till they're about the length, and, and that's up to you how long you want your legs. I'm going to be a little bit, just a little bit short of the whole body in length. So, give me a piece of you. Pull you back right there. Just the end of the body. And that's just how, that's just how I like to see them. That's, again, completely up to you how you, how you like to see that. So I'm going to get in here, and that's what I was saying when I, oh, May Day. Take Mayday. Back to that. So, uh, back here, this is what I was saying about with, uh, I just checked my legs, that's what I, I'm going to look that over. I'm going to, if I didn't have that dam build up in advance, when I tied those legs in, they'd stand straight up. They, you'd, they'd go down into the gap. And so, I'm going to just nip those off of there. Clean that up. And so, however, you know, sometimes I'll make that this orange thing out of, you know, I've done it out of yellow, I've done it, done them out of red, I've done them all kinds of colors. I kind of 
ended up with this orange. I just like the looks of it. Uh, I don't know. And it, and it really, I don't know if it makes a difference, but they're, it looks good in the water. Everything's fine. And then make sure that you, you know, hit that with a little bit of lacquer. But you can see, here's your little accent legs right here. So as it's coming down at the fish, there's a little bit of shine to it. You know, you got a little bit of shine in the body, you got a little bit of that. And it's just, and it's a moving shine. So your tail, tail's actually a little bit longer than I want it. Uh, you could, uh, I'm going to leave it, doesn't matter that much. But then the legs are sitting up here. They've got a little bit of accent. They're sitting where they belong. Hit it with a drop of glue if you've got some. I'll have you sitting right there. But that's all you've got to it. You can see how thin the body is. That's the key. There's not much body. All right, that tail's too long. It's about to be shorter. I want it that long. That's how long it should have been. So we fixed it. Um, the body is really sparse. That's the big thing. The body's sparse. And so it's not going to hold back your fly from descending through the water quickly. And that's the key to these flies. It's super quick. It's a really durable fly. I do this fly in three colors, basically. I like this peachy, that really pale colored. It's called wood duck, I think, or no, that's cream on this one. I do this in wood duck, cream, and I do the olive. Uh, pretty much, it just pretty much blend. That's the only three colors I do it in. And for the most part, it's this color and the olive. And, but everything else is the same, just a little tiny collar, a little, little hot spot and go. It sinks just about as fast as the other ones. And there's certain times when there's a lot of bugs in the water, I think it'll, you know, it'll hang right in there with any of the other ones. And so with the Pertigons or the Bullets or the other styles. And so anyway, it's a really fun fly. Hope you like it. Hope it helps you out.